So hello, my name is Surval. Uh, thank you for having me today. Uh, I'm a former team lead for the Kujo Appliance. I'm going to talk about how we implement safe browsing using Lua and the operating system kernel. So first, uh, what's Kujo? Kujo is a smart file. I hope that uh, you could see the, the image, but it's not possible. Uh, it's a appliance that you put on the side of, of your home router, and it provides uh, security for your network. But the main feature is safe browsing that provides uh, protection for your navigation on HTTP and HTTPS and along with parental controls filters like you can specify that your children device cannot access uh, inappropriate content. Then you have uh, an application that can create rules and uh, be alerted to all events, security events. This is our, our team, our fever team that's hosted, is based in Brazil, except for one developer that is in Lithuania. So the engine for safe browsing is composed mainly by the Lunatic, that is a Lua VM embedded in the Linux kernel. This work has started as a research in Lua. Uh, this is a paper. Uh, script of operating systems with Lua. Uh, the other part is the Lua data library that is used for accessing packets data with, without copying it from buffers. And the NFLua uh, binding that is a net feature binding uh, to allow us to run dual scripts inside the Linux packet filter. Okay, so this is uh, our components. We run this uh, all in the, in the box and we have a cloud service that is responsible to collect, to receive collected data and to push rules to the to the appliance. For this, we have an agent software that coordinates the communication with the cloud and controls the the kernel module. And this agent has a particular demon that is called Threat D that is is responsible for the communication with the kernel module and uh, between the kernel and the user space. It's a bit uh, weird that here because NFLUA is lunatic is inside NFLUA. Uh, it's because we have a um, one kernel module where we we embed the virtual machine and all the, the other bindings to load just one um, binary. So, um, we have also a collection of scripts that uh, we load in, in the NFLUA to perform the actual logics. So, uh, the first step to the operation is to configure the, the system. We receive a collection of rules in a JSON 
objects from the cloud. For example, saying that a particular device should or should not access a category of websites. Um, thresholds for reputations of websites that is pretended to to be hard. And we will we receive these from the cloud in the agent software, the agent process, and it communicates uh, with the NF Lua through TrackD and a slash block interface. Uh, I'll show how the code works in the following slides. So the agent basically uh, loads the, all the scripts, then it does a function call appending uh, the, the JSON object in the in the parameter of the call and load, uh, load it in the slash prop. Also, that is how we load. We just do a cat on the on the scripts to a special slash proc in the operating system. And on the net filter itself, we create IP tables rules. It's highlighted in my my screen, but not in the. Okay. Here, here you can see we specify the NF Lua module with uh, dash and Lua dash dash function and indicate the callback. It should be called when when the rule is when a packet is matched to. The particular group. For example, if we receive a packet for HTTP on port 80, it will call this uh, NF HTTP uh, function, Lua function. So, this is how we load the JSON object. We just open uh, the pseudo file uh, slash block uh, slash NF Lua. And we write the function call passing the JSON we have received it. Here you see the, the file and we write this into the, the NFLO description, the script. And inside the kernel, it will, will be handled by a by a handle a callback called NF Lua Write that's responsible to to receive the buffer that was uh, written from the user space and just performs a two string on it. And the action function call will the will the code the the JSON object or Using a JSON binding library that was written by uh, Mark Bowman. We imported it to the group. So, once we have this configured uh, and we receive a packet that matches the rule, we call a next filter hook called NF Lua Max, which we will end up calling uh, the callback defined in the IP tables row. Then our script uh, show in a second will try to match uh, the host name of the request performed it by the user and uh, look into a cache that is just a low table, and if it, if it, it doesn't have the, the entry for that particular website, we will just hot drop the packet, forcing a different transmission of the of the 
by HTTP request. And at the same time, it uh, writes a, a lookup action or a lookup request on slash block uh, in Flora, which will be written by by the tracks the demo and we will look up, we will perform a lookup into the cloud. The cloud will return with the uh, evaluation of the, that uh, website. For example, if you, the user is requesting uh, facebook.com, it will respond with the categories like social media, and our reputation saying that it's an okay site to navigate. But if the users navigate to a website like hostname.com that contains malware, it will respond uh, that is a, a malicious site and it will fill the, the cache with that information. So, as we have hot drop at the packet, it will be eventually retransmitted by TCP. And at that time, we will have this cache and we will perform the, the, action, the actual action, blocking or accepting the, the request. For accepting, just let the, the Packet through the forwarding mechanism of Linux. Um, if blocking, we drop that package and we forge a new packet to the client with uh, containing a uh, HTTP redirect to a block page. Here is the hook, the next filter hook for for column rule, and this is uh, precisely the place who we talk to load. So just uh, look for the callback. Here we use Lua data to pass the package to the script without copying it, and we call the the callback. No, oh, let's see. And then we return the action to to the next filter. Here is an example of script to running in the next filter. Here we have some layouts for for the data to access the package filter package fields. Um, here are simple pattern matching for the host name of the website. And here we we have a mechanism for blocking, uh, sending the block page to the user, or even unblock the request if requested in the block page. The user can proceed to the block and block site. <laughs> Here is a Lua data example to, to map uh, IPv4 header. It's just uh, offsets and lengths and the internet parameter as well to convert this to, to adjust the, the byte order to when it was accessed the field zero. Once you apply the, the layout, you can just access the, the package as a low table, a regular low table. And this is how we block uh, SSL. Uh, SSL has a 
extension called Client Hello that communicates the requested website. So we just parse that packet looking for the extension and once we find the the client hello extension um, we we extract the host name if uh, if no data. Um, here, uh, here is a binding we created for Inaflua to be able to send packets, in, to forge packets inside the TCP connection. So we can send up arbitrary data to to the client of the connection. We are in the middle and we can respond. Uh, with the payload we want, and it will calculate probably the sequence and acknowledge numbers and checksum and so on. So once it got, it got blocked, it will display this, this page, and the user can decide if you are gonna proceed to give up of accessing the particular website. For parental controls it's not possible because uh, it doesn't make sense to have such option. So why no uh, I think it's the wrong place to advocate but this presentation was made for other audience as well. But it's worth to say that it's very very straightforward to port over to different platforms and kind of straightforward to port to new kernels who you're doing this, I think Gabriel and me in a week we were able to port for a completely different platform that we are using to, to work. And for us, this is the most important part of choosing Lua because as we are implementing a security application, we cannot, uh, we should be very careful on, on changing the, the operating system kernel. So Lua provides uh, such uh, great features for that, like isolated states and even the test suite was very helpful to validate the, our part on different platforms, different environments. Pedro had done a, had done a great work with this. And since uh, 93, there is only one disclosure uh, vulnerability in the that we can consult. And our results using Lua for uh, doing this kind of filtering. Before using Lua for safe browsing, we first implemented this as a proxy. We were able to reach out only 150 megabits per second in a gigabit uh, interface. Using NFLUA, we were able to, to have 500 megabits per second. And using hardware acceleration in our platform, we are able to achieve even uh, 750 megabits per second and we are not secure about, we don't see the skill using 100% of uh, resource and on our platform if we just bypass all the traffic using the hardware acceleration without going through the kernel to 
process packets, we are able only to have 890 megabits per second. That is, we are very close to the hardware limit of the platform. Um, today we have a base of uh, 5,000, almost 5,000 and a half uh, units online using uh, this, using NFluid. So that's it. Questions? I'm curious how that would compare to just sort of running in user space instead of the kernel. Because I mean, you can use. Yes, you can see Tiny Prox, for example. Yeah, okay, it's a prox. Like, yeah. Is, is that because say, Tiny Proxy is. Like, is Tiny Proxy well written to be fast? Like um, maybe it wasn't optimized as much as you did? Like, yes, I, I, I don't know if it's that optimized, but for, it was the best we could find that fit in our platform. Because, for example, we cannot run on Nginx because it's too big for these appliances. Open RST, for example. Well, yeah, I mean, as opposed to um, like running, uh, it's called the, the NetFilter Net API, where you can give yourself a, a destination in an IP table rule and says, send it to this local Unix socket. Something like that. Something like that, yeah. Yes. It, if it's an FQ, it's not possible, for example, for forging packets using the user space. You can collect data and do some action. Also, you will add some latency to go to the user space, evaluate, and then uh, send the result to, to the kernel. Actually, we have done our work on NetBSD. NetBCD has Lua in its kernel. I have some packs for the MDF packet filter, but I don't have enough time to, to commit this. Uh, we have a plan to open all this software in, in time soon, but much more a question of time than realness. Um, so when you say it's not CPU bound, uh, what is it bound uh, on? It's like what was your bottleneck when you say in the actually, actually I don't know because we didn't investigate this in the. I think the bottleneck now using FastPath is to go through the Linux kernel. I didn't perform. A, Test yet using only the Linux kernel to routing these using uh, the fast path for particular packets, but without filtering. It reproduce the same condition we have here without filtering. I guess we will be very close to this number. Because when you, you go through the operating system, you, you have to Waste some time with the eruptions and some stuff that you need to do. Uh, just a side question: what, what kind of machines are this? It is a uh, mix. Uh, don't remind the clock, but it's limited. It's not a. Uh, okay. More questions. <laughs> 